Welcome to another episode of Action Video Game Talk. I'm your host, Scott Action Jackson. Thanks for joining me today, or tonight, or whenever you're watching or listening to this episode. Once again, I have a list of news articles to go through, so let's hop right into it. Street Fighter 2 is joining a collection of other franchises, both Capcom and non-Capcom, to appear in the upcoming Monster Hunter for Ultimate. You can check out the video and the image shown to see Balenka and Chung Lee versions of the feline Palicos. Street Fighter 2's Blanca and Chung Lee join Mega Man, Link, Samus, Animal Crossing, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Taiko, Drum Master, for cameos in the upcoming 3DS game. Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate releases on 3DS in early 2015. So it seems there's another crossover that's going to happen with Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate on the 3DS. This time it's going to be, I guess, two costume type things by way of Street Fighter. One being Blanca and the other being Chung Lee. Now I'm sure you'll probably be able to find the video online on YouTube to see what it looks like. But they kind of have a setup the opening of the YouTube video or whatever video you might even see it on Facebook if it's on there. It kind of opens up like the standard Street Fighter 2 game does. You know, it's like Capcom, then the little face-off or whatever. But this is not the only recent crossover that's been announced. There is one other one. Disney's hit animated film Frozen is getting the sack. A costume pack featuring Elsa, Anna, Kristoff, Olaf, and more are coming to Little Big Planet. Each costume will be available individually for $1.99, or you can purchase the whole bundle for $5.99. Getting the set is the only way to get the Olaf outfit. You'll be able to get these today, December 16th, when the store refreshes. You can also download the Free Winter Creators Kit, so the Frozen cast has a natural environment in which to play. With just about everything that can get Frozen thrown on from cups to little posters and figures and costumes. You know, at, at this point it's more like, ha hey, hell, why not? So we got the little Big Planet Frozen pack. Or you could just buy each and every one of these costumes separately, but if you do it that way, you won't be getting the Olaf outfit. So yeah, it would be a little bit better and easier this way, just get the whole bundle pack for $5.99. And then there's supposed to be a free download for the Winter Creators Kit, which you can probably use to help the background and stuff like that to play with the Frozen characters, costumes, whatever. And aside from that little Olaf Frozen game on the DS and 3DS, something like this might be the closest thing we're going to get to playing the Frozen movie on a video game. Capcom has revealed the first new face you can expect to see in the forthcoming Street Fighter V. Unveiled during the 2014 Capcom Cup Tournament, the new character, Charlie Nash, will debut alongside Street Fighter V exclusivity on PlayStation 4 and PC. Charlie originally appeared in Street Fighter Alpha, but judging by the reveal, will be somewhat updated version of the character. Capcom producer Yoshinoi Ono appeared on stage dressed as Charlie after the event to discuss Street Fighter V and to announce that Capcom Pro Tour and Capcom Cup will continue next year with a $500,000 prize purse. We've been hard at work at Street Fighter V, and we promise this product will be the one that brings fighting games into the next era, said Ono. This will be a huge step for us and our community. The next iteration of the series will also feature cross-platform play, allowing users from both PlayStation 4 and PC to battle against one another, Ono confirmed during last week's PlayStation Experience event. Now, I just watched the little video that showed this tease of the Charlie character. The first part you see is a pair of glasses or something on the table. In which case, if you see something like that by way of Capcom, at first you think Albert Wesker, but then the guy with blonde hair puts on glasses and a little oval 
light glows on his forehead. So I don't know if something has happened to this Charlie character or not. Maybe Bison got a hold of him and did some experiment. At least they're trying to reveal more characters that's going to be in the game besides from the standard ones that we know of. Right now we know Ryu's in, Chung Li is in, this Charlie is in. So we probably will see a few more characters revealed. Tetris Ultimate is heading to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on December 16th and 17th respectively. Though already out on the Nintendo 3DS, Tetris Ultimate had yet to have its new gen console release date scheduled by publisher Ubisoft. A recent post on Ubisoft's official blog, however, has now confirmed that the Tecmo-tastic game is arriving on consoles this week. Tetris Ultimate game modes includes Endless, clear those lines, Ultra, score as much as possible inside the 3 minute limit, Battle, head to head with 1 to 4 challengers, Marathon, compete level 15 and keep racking up the points, and Battle Ultimate, use power ups to smite those challengers. So this fun little Tetris game that was released on the Nintendo 3DS is finally coming to the systems, but it's coming to the new generation systems. PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, which is a bit of a disappointment. I mean, a game like this should be coming across all video game systems. Not only the new generation ones, but the older ones. Well, current ones. It should be not only PlayStation 4, Xbox One, but also PS3, 360, and even the Wii U. Even though Ubisoft doesn't really like the Wii U, those fuckers. But for anybody who has played a Tetris game, they know how much fun this game can be. So, yeah, you should give this a shot. The Destiny development team released a new patch that fixes some issues introduced in Dark Below. Most of these are just minor fixes, but the biggest is probably making the Fista Corta replayable. Previously, you could not repeat the mission, which was troublesome for finishing bounties. Bungie added, we are also continuing to support the Destiny Sandbox with changes that were identified prior to the launch of Expansion 1. So once again, we have another update patch that fixes a few minor issues, and also one major issue, which is being able to replay this Fista Corta. Now let's try and go through the list of stuff that was fixed, or at least try to. First, this is, uh, according to the Bungie website, fixed a typo in the German word for radiant energy. I don't know what kind of typo there could have been. They, maybe they accidentally wrote a different like line or something. Uh, fixed an issue in which some weapon projectiles were improperly penetrating hive shields. Okay, that's weird. Uh, and this one's supposed to be, well actually, these next ones are supposed to be for the pocket infinity weapon, I think. Rolled back changes induced by a previous exotic weapon update. Charged up and deactivation now work as originally designed. Players may again encounter the previous known issue which prevents charge up. So those were little fixes that they did with Pocket Infendi exotic weapon. Now these next three that they have listed is for the gear. Both existing and future raid gear obtained in Corda's End now begins at level 30 with an upgrade path to reach level 32. So this thing um, just gives you raid gear that begins at level 30 and can upgrade to 32. Isn't that the way it's supposed to have been with the, with the dark below path with the new raids? Uh, raid helmet obtained in Corda's End now drops on normal mode and will be more frequent drop on hard mode. So a raid helmet can now drop in the normal mode when you go through the raid and becomes more frequent when it's on the hard mode. Okay, that that's fixed an issue in which Dead Orbit Hunter awarded reputation gains for both Dead Orbit and Vanguard Crucible. So this little, I guess, fix gave you more reputation gains or points or whatever for, I guess, hunters cloaking themselves. And then the final thing that they fixed was being able to replay the Fist of Corda mission. And if you don't remember, the Fist of Corda was one hell of a boss to try and <laughs> destroy when you got to him. Well, that's it for this episode of Action Video Game Talk. 
Once again, thanks for joining me today or tonight or whenever you're watching or listening to this episode. Later on, I'll have the separate clips up if you want to check those out. Down below, I'll have the Facebook link if you want to check out that. Or check out the Facebook page for Action Video Game Talk. Uh, until next time, bye.